15 and 20. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Share more with us, Pastor. I appreciate what you bring to us. If you'd like to present this word a little more to the center, I think it would help us quite a few of us here. I'm looking at verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Did you catch that in Psalms 107? What did God send in order to heal us? What did God send in order to deliver us? So if I want to be healed and delivered, where do you suppose I'm going to focus my mental attention? Just when I'm at church? Um, If we could get the handouts. Did you all get a handout? Um, You got one from the last presentation. Anybody that didn't get saving belief on unlocking mystery. Do we have any more left? Any handouts? Okay. Um, Handout for this presentation um, called A Most Misunderstood Gift. Rescuer's Best Friend. Um, And I'm going to be following, um, along with my Bible, I'm going to be following this um, presentation right from your sheet. So if you have Bibles, you should have now, we're going to be looking at the most misunderstood gift for healing and victory. So I get to follow my notes, and you get to follow along. All right. We're looking now at what I believe to be one of the most misunderstood gifts. That's the reason I titled this presentation. And it's actually, the gift is repentance. So starting out, I just want us to go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. And turn with you in your Bibles to Acts chapter 20. When it comes to repentance, the Bible has its own storyline. So, even if you didn't get a handout, I want you to look at the Word. We're looking at Mark chapter 1 now, and uh, we're looking at John the Baptist. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Now, here's the question we want to answer. What two 
ingredients will the true gospel of Christ always contain? Very important question. Many people have the idea there's only one ingredient. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. All right, here we go. Mark chapter 1, we're looking at verses 14 and 15. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into the Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Watch verse 15. And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Do you see the two ingredients? What we're going to be looking at this morning is why repentance is so important to believing the gospel. Acts chapter 20. Paul talking about his experience now. Acts chapter 20. And I'm going to read from verse 20 and 21. You watch closely. Paul says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is again. By the way, in the Greek, the word believe and the word faith come from the same Greek word, pistua. Both accounts. Repent and believe. For some reason, repentance is extremely valuable for anybody who wants to be saved. Number two on your sheet. If you got the sheet, did you get the hand on? Ah, not getting it yet. Oh, you mean you have to listen to me? Oh, mercy. Well, listen to the Word, what the Word says. That's what we want to look at. Now, where does true repentance originate? Go in your Bibles to Acts chapter 5. It certainly is a gift from God. And if you want to fill in the blanks from what my brother just said, that'd be great. But I want you to see it from God's Word. Acts chapter 5. We're looking at verse 31. And I'm going to start reading from verse 29. Actually, we could spend the rest of our time together in those four verses, but humor me. I'm just enjoying the Word. By the way, the entrance of His Word gives light. It gives understanding even to the simple. I'm one of the simple. I want to be one of the simple because I want to understand the Word the way God wants me to understand it. How about you? Ah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the... Romans 10, 17. We're looking at Acts chapter 5 now. Notice what it says here. I'm reading now from verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a cross, hanged on a tree. Can you imagine someone saying that to you? By the way, whose sins hung Jesus on the cross? Okay. Verse 30. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give what? Repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Verse 32, And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost which God hath given to them that, what? That obey him. Very, very important. Understand and know that repentance is a gift from God. You and I cannot work true repentance up 
from our own gumption. Does that make sense? Oh, poor me, I made a mistake. Oh, man. Um, on your sheet, and I'm just going to read this, but the Greek word for repentance is a Greek word, metanao. <laughs> metanao. And it means, and get this, No wonder Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ to Jesus. If a person wants to experience repentance that is a gift from God, they must be willing to think about the circumstances they were, they're repenting of. The way... God teaches them to think. We're going now to First Corinthians chapter seven. Is everybody following so far? Repentance means to think differently. If it's true repentance from God, whose thoughts are we going to think, be willing to think concerning the circumstance we're facing? Where do I find God's thoughts? Aren't you glad God gave me an ear? I hope God gives you an ear also to hear what He wants to speak to you personally from the, the Bible text we're looking at. I've been thinking differently. I've been thinking what Jesus wants me to think, and nothing is changing. Oh. Every time you think a thought, neurologically it is changing your brain. Did you hear that? Every thought that you think, neurologically, is changing your brain either for God, more like Christ, or against Him. And for some reason over the years, I've met a lot of Christians, I was one of them at one time, that as long as I'm in church and I'm just thinking, you know, you know, kind of following the preacher and reading the Bible text, I'm okay. And when I step outside the door, I can just go back to my old thinking. Anybody been there? That is not God's repentance. The Lord said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
I'm thanking you right now for you that's not holding this on. Lord, give me a bigger ear. Okay. Did we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7? 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Notice the picture here. This book's in the Library of Congress. Did you know that? Second Corinthians chapter 7. I'm looking now at it. I'm going to start reading at verse 9. I'm going to focus in on verses 10 and 11. Watch close. Because here is a picture. Here is a picture of true repentance. I'm looking at Second Corinthians 7 now, verse 9. Paul says, Now I rejoice... Not that you were made sorry, hmm, but you sorrowed to repentance. Uh, bank robbers can even experience being made sorry. Are you following? Oh, I got caught. I'm sorry. Oh, man. That is not godly repentance. Here we go. Verse 10. For godly sorrow works repentance to what? Not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world works death. For behold this selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort. Notice the adverbs here. What carefulness it wrought in you. What clearing of yourselves. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. What vehement desire. What zeal, what revenge. In all these things you've approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. How would you put Second Corinthians seven ten into one sentence? What we just read, ten and eleven. want that kind of repentance. How about you? Now remember, this is what it means. If I want this kind of repentance, it means there's some radical changes that need to happen in my thinking. Now, question. We'll probably be looking at this this afternoon, but question. How in the world can I tell that my repentance is really true? Trick question. From what's on the board, how can I tell my repentance is really true? Bingo. My sorrow for getting caught. Yes. For thinking outside of God's will concerning the circumstance that I'm facing.
Second Corinthians chapter 10 now, we're looking at verses 4 and 5. How does the Bible describe this amazing, heart-changing practice of thinking about things differently? In other words, thinking Christ's thoughts about the circumstances I'm facing. How does he do that? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Who'd like to read it? Someone go ahead and read it. Or are we re- recording this? Should I just read it? Probably okay. All right. Here we go. Second Corinthians, I'm looking at chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. <clears throat> For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. By the way, where is the battle go on? Bingo. Yep, yep, yep. Now remember, repentance think differently. Okay, all right, here we go. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. But we're at? <gasps> yes. Wow. And look at verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God Bringing into captivity how many thoughts? Every thought into the obedience of Christ. What are those verses painting a picture of? By the way, we're studying repentance. What are those verses actually giving us a picture of? For the weapons of our warfare, warfare against what? How does the devil work? You've got to see this and we'll go back. Bring my mind back to this. You've got to see this. Go to Acts chapter 2. I want you to see and, and Acts chapter 2 and um, John chapter 13. I want you to see how the devil works. Because it has everything to do with what we're talking about. Acts 2. Let's go to John 13 two first. experience of Judas at the Last Supper. (gasps) Judas, are you crazy? But I have been a Judas in my experience. Even while I've been in the pew on Sabbath morning. Watch this. John 13, I'm now reading. Last Supper, reading verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He knew he was going to the cross. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him. What did the enemy do? This is big. Where does repentance happen? So here it is. I'll give you, we'll, we'll look at Acts chapter 5 in a moment. Here it is. We're sitting in the pew. And all of a sudden, this thought about the work that I'm doing during the week pops into my mind. Something I should have done. 
Or all of a sudden, a mistake that I made on my test pops into my mind. Or all of a sudden, that person that done me wrong pops into my mind. And I'm in church. putting an idea in your head. And what he's wanting to do is to distract your attention so you lose the track of what's being presented. Woo! True or false? I just wanted to make sure you were following me. This is where the battle goes on. This is where we're rescued or we're lost. This is so big. Philippians 2.5 Let this mind be in you which was also in Well, now here's the big one. In the Greek... I've, I've done enough study of Greek to be a little vicious, a little, uh, wrong word, a little dangerous to what most people, concepts people have. But in the Greek, the word repentance here is in the present tense. Outside of the nominative case, present tense means an ongoing practice, not a one-time event. When we, when we say, well, I'm here presently, present tense, I'm talking to you, present tense, but in the Greek, present tense is a continual practice. Do you know why it has to become a continual practice in our mind to think differently to think like Jesus is teaching us to think. Why is that so important? By the way, um, there's a handout available on this subject that I'm just touching bases on. <coughs> and uh, you'll be receiving that, I think. I don't know when the time is at the end. Yeah, yeah. Where you'll get a very thorough picture. I'm just giving you a nutshell. Is everybody following this? Does it make sense? Is it valuable for my salvation? 
It is essential. Okay, can I pin you down? Please say yes, you can pin me down here. What's the habit? Until it becomes my life. I don't have to think about how to brush my teeth anymore. It's a habit. I don't have to tell you how to think about my pets and the love of my life. How come? I don't have to tell you about what I think about Jesus. Probably guess what I think about Jesus. How come? I can't imagine the love that He had for you and me. That He was willing to take your sins and my sins in His own body. And go to the tree and pay the death penalty, experience the death penalty that you and I deserve. So that we, by receiving Him, receiving His mind, practicing thinking His thoughts about the people in my life, about the circumstances I'm facing. By the way, nothing can touch you except by God's permission, and all things that are permitted work together for good. Are you following? 1 Corinthians 10, 13, Romans 8, 28, and 29. By the way, we always quote Romans 8, 28, but verse 29 says this, and it's very important. Let me quote it for you. Romans 8, 28 says, For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are the called according to His purpose. And then it says in verse 29, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. Did you get that? That He might be the firstborn among many brethren. And who are His brethren? That's you and me. Conformed to the image of His Son. I love that. Well, i got to stop. But let me ask you a question. What are you hearing from what we're just covering here. What, what are you seeing? Uh, give me a little input. True repentance affects change. Change where at? In the heart of your mind. Yep. Question. How easy is it for me to experience godly repentance if I'm spending no time in God's Word? Thank you. God's Word is absolutely essential for a victorious salvation experience with Jesus Christ. It's essential for anybody who wants to think differently.
to think like Jesus thinks, to experience godly repentance. Make sense? Amen. Oh, That's perfect. Yeah. Lord, thank you that you've given us not only an understanding about repentance, you've given us the tools, the Bible, the information, the ability to trust, gift of faith, the ability to choose so that I can decide, grace to cover me, to empower me. Lord, all these gifts you've given us, thank you very much. And Lord, I'm sorry this morning for abusing those gifts and not experiencing true godly repentance but quite often the repentance of the world. I pray that your your Holy Spirit would just impress each of our hearts this morning with the importance of experiencing your gift of repentance. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for living and dying and modeling the healthy life and the healing death that rescues us from sin. Thank you. In your name we pray and praise you. Amen.